Today in studio with the Admiral, who has promised me free lunch at his new restaurant in Boonesboro for the rest of my life. Thanks, Bill. That's so generous of you. I, the least I can do, Rob. It the is really the least yeah. you can do. There's so because, much more you could do for me. Yeah, because you have so few people that will offer you free lunches. So I, I like to kind of jump up and make that offer. Especially yeah. when it's not even his to offer. <laughs> yes, that's even more generous. I Why find it, it's much easier to give away money when it's not yours. Yeah. So I've discovered that. Come on, Maria. I had a good thing going there for <laughs> a while, and you burst the bubble. Sorry. She's not letting you get away with anything. <laughs> she never has. That's why we <laughs> keep her around. Maria Lawrence. Good morning. Uh, our guest in this segment is Dirk Stansberry. He's a candidate for county uh, commissioner. Good morning. Dirk, how are you? Uh, good morning. I'm doing quite well. Uh, give us uh, a little synopsis of the Dirk Stansberry story to this point. Well, before I do that, can I uh, yes. reinforce what the mayor said? I heard some of that coming in, and uh, I want to throw some kudos to Andy Blake as well. I've worked with him. He's a quick mind mm-hmm. and a heck of a sense of humor, too. I like that. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, some of the areas that I really am interested in, in in the cooperation between the county and them. And even more, go further, considering that trail system, um, we always have situations with the state not really getting involved with us and asking our opinion. If you look at that road on 9 where they brought it, they terminated on the east side of the railroad tracks. Mm-hmm. So if you were like going to Royal Crest Mobile Homes and, and that service road parallel back where Orsini's is, you got to get out on to nine, go across the railroad track before you can get back out of the traffic. Yeah. Come on, you only another, you know, 50 yards and you're done. Um, I did, you know, blink my county engineer eyes trying to get uh, Royal Farms to extend it at least in front of their place. But, you know, that's... That was their prerogative, Mm -hmm. Um, and they didn't have to. But it would have been nice if the state would have worked with both the city and us, and we could have connected that already and a little bit safer travel in that corner. All right, so that's... Sometimes life isn't ideal, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I got uh, to the Eastern Panhandle in uh, 87, Um, graduated from WVU, but I also have a BA in education and taught at Bridgeport. Uh, for seven years, and also Roan County. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 87, the population of Berkeley County was, what, about 55, 60,000? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about that when uh, going into a planning commission meeting, there'd be one cons- one or two consultants at most. The planning commissions were like 15 minutes long. Mm-hmm. And, and your background is in what? Uh, as far as... Your, your uh, job. Well, the um, uh, civil engineering. Mm-hmm. Uh, so design and consultant, primarily, uh, literally, I know this county from underground up, sewer, water, uh, roads, uh, and quite a few of the subdivisions out there have my fingerprints on them, mm-hmm. and some of the commercial sites, uh, and well, I did the outdoor, the parking facilities around the train station when it was remodeled uh, to that. So I've been... Uh, designing and consulting in that area since 87 in uh, the panhandle in maryland uh, not so much in virginia but a little bit have you ever run for office before no no i did hold um, a seat with the uh, solid waste authority in jefferson county Mm -hmm. Um, i moved from jefferson county one mile (laughs) to berkeley county um, in uh, 05 but I've been just around Route 45 since the, the 87 year. So uh, I also uh, took a spell as the county engineer. And uh, through probably one of the strangest times in 87 when we had uh, the groundwater table two feet above the ground, mm-hmm. if you recall those, those days. <laughs> um, I mean, you their people's wells were actually artesianing. There was so much water pressure, and I've never seen any or heard anything like that before. Uh, and that really opened up a lot of eyes in uh, uh, in the county as far as what type of regulations and where you should or shouldn't put a basement for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, hopefully we never have that situation again. Uh- Dirk Stansberry, Dirk Stansberry is our guest, by the way, as a candidate for county commissioner. So, uh, Dirk, talk to me about, in regards to being 
Uh, you mentioned the subdivisions and such. This is county a couple of times has wrestled with the question of zoning. As you're trying to plan out developments, you've lived in Jefferson County, which has some zoning, and Berkeley County, which has very limited zoning. Tell me about the challenges in managing development without zoning in a county. Well, right now, uh, well, let's just say what zoning is. Zoning is nothing but pigeonholes. Mm -hmm. What makes zoning a pain or pleasure, whichever side you're on, is the specific sub-ordinances that go into each of those pigeonholes. So um, you may be able to do something in this pigeonhole, but not that pigeonhole. Right now, we have basically one big giant pigeonhole. So we have one ordinance, with the exception of the Tuscarora zoning and around the airport, a couple things like that. They have all the property around Bill's house is zoned now, too, <laughs> by the way. No, no one's allowed to move anywhere near there. Not true, but go ahead, Dirk. <laughs> okay. He puts all of us in kind of a confused tailspin. <laughs> you building a wall, are you? Yeah, I'm building a wall. <laughs> but um, the, you know, we have, um, as I said, the one zone, so we have one ordinance that takes care of that. And in itself, it, it's uh, it's gotten improved. Um, we, we had... Uh, the ordinances that we were living by that we got through in 08 and 09 and they were, they were uh, fraught with overlap and contradictions and so a lot of that was cleaned up in the last set of ordinances but those ordinances again since they're one size fit all apply in uh, uh, falling waters or in back creek or in inwood so you don't have any control of what's going on in that area mm -hmm. that's just limited to the um, availability of infrastructure like sewer water transportation those things seem to be the only limiting thing to what you can and can't do right um, a lot of people get angry with the planning commission for approving something but the planning commission's hands are tied because once you get your entrance permit your NPDS permit from the Department of uh, Environmental Protection you get uh, any other outside permit and you follow the ordinances, there's not a darn thing they can do about it. They could try. In regards to stopping a development or right. subdivision, correct? Right. Well, even in Jefferson County, Jefferson County is, is known for taking um, blocked projects to Charleston and losing in front of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, once they comply with what's there, once they're complying with the law, they can go forward. Got Basically, you have to rubber stamp it. Well, I mean, it's not carte blanche. I mean, you do have some, particularly in the design side of it, where um, the uh, planners and engineers can, you know, point out things that you must do. And, of course, you have the public hearings. And if you have a situation where it looks like there's a threat, um, a situation and there are a couple in this county, by the way, where you have a massive dormwater pond uh, in some way's back door. Mm -hmm. So when those kind of things show up at the design stage, and this is really where, where we can get a little bit more pressure in there and get to identifying that this is a hazardous situation, you cannot do that thing. So they can't actually do anything they want. But they do have to, as long as they comply with it, get the, the engineering solid and solid, they can go forward with it. Let's talk about why you want to be a county commissioner. Well, as I said and before we started, um, I feel a responsible for this growth. Um, and um, I'm Berkeley County proud. I love where I live. And I want to be part of it, and I want to help it smooth out the rough edges the things I wasn't able to do as a county engineer, I want, to, I want to assist in that area and get this through. Um, if we had cooperation, uh, segueing back to what we just talked about, if we can get um, the Eastern Panhandle as a single chorus, you know, uh, from Romney to Harper's Ferry, singing the same chorus in Charleston, if we can get uh, our 
people to look at getting the various state agencies to work with us, we can have a little bit more control. But that sounds more like a House of Delegates position than a county commissioner position, Dirk. That's true, but I'm talking about getting everybody to be working together. Yes, getting our delegates in there so they're understanding where we need to go, where Jefferson County needs to go, where Morgan County needs to go. Um, there's one class I had in college. I don't remember anything about the class except this one uh, definition, a community. A community is not defined by a geographic boundary. It's defined by a common asset or a common problem. And we have common problems in the eastern panhandle. We also have common problems north and south with, from Chambersburg down to Harrisonburg with 81. So we need to be having enough communications between ourselves so that we're not piecemeal asking and working in Charleston. If we can get all of our delegates, all of our people uh, working from in all the counties, seeing about the problems we have in the Eastern Panhandle, we might be able to be heard for a change. Billy. Yeah, uh, Dirk, I agree with you. And it's tried. It's been tried in the past with very limited success. Uh, Twenty years ago, we had all three counties getting together, coming up with common, common needs. We presented them in in uh, total to the legislators. Uh, very little got done. A couple of the counties then got tired of participating, and they pulled back. Uh, that's not to say it cannot be resurrected, and hopefully should. I agree that we need to talk with a more common voice. However, uh, so some of what you said to me sounds more aspirational uh, than it would actual in practice. Uh, have you looked at something more specific that you'd try to do that would get, get away from the aspirational category to actual very practical we should be able to achieve? We have um, a situation where uh, I've actually met with the Department of Highways. Uh, the local guys uh, are very helpful. But sometimes uh, when you're trying to get them to actually put some money <laughs> where their mouth yeah. is, uh, they run and hide. Uh, I was basically told that the reason that there was a problem at this particular site was because Berkeley County had unlimited growth. And I was like, well, you guys gave them the entrance permit, and we're back to that other point. Once they get all their permits, not a darn thing we do about it. Well, there is one, I think, the water ordinance, uh, after they get their uh, original permit, if they cannot meet certain threshold requirements of water for anything more than 15 homes, then they have to stop. That's, you were talking about wells. Ta yeah, talking about, excuse me, exactly right. Uh, wells and not uh, uh, not on, uh, by Brooklyn County Water District. Correct. You're exactly right, sorry. Maria. Um, so you I jotted down a couple quotes. The Planning Commission has its hands tied, and I'm going to smooth out some rough ed edges. Are you in favor of a countywide zoning ordinance? That's for the citizens. But what you need is somebody who's bumped their head on ordinances because a good ordinance is okay uh, um, in zoning, and bad is terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, zoning has been used uh, to uh, segregate, not necessarily segregate of uh, races or, or genders or any of that stuff, but it's more of economics, uh, the let's get rid of the mobile homes type of stuff. So you have, uh, you have to be able to look at the zoning and know that this one was, that's a wonderful one for Annapolis, Maryland or Dallas, Texas, but that's not Berkeley County. And you have to be able to see that uh, even when they tried to, Jefferson County tried a very uh, a good approach in their uh, point system, but you have to be able to see that somebody can make those points come to their advantage. So you have to be able to make sure that if, if the citizens do choose, that what they're getting is not going to be so restrictive in each of those little pigeonholes that they can't can't live there and that's uh, that's my point so so you would favor putting it out for the citizens to vote on again if that yeah if they wanted if that was pushed by the citizens um, but not pushed by you no okay I mean if so, that if that's what the citizens if they if they come through 
and push for it, you know, that's the citizens. And then the second quote, so what are some of those rough edges that you want to smooth out? Well, the rough edges would be the, uh, um, so many of them, the uh, getting uh, the process in the system so that there are uh, logical, I don't want to go that way, uh, you got me there. Um, when we have a development that where there's individual little commercial lots popping up on a corner of a farm and understand that you know farming is a nonprofit organization and you have to almost sell ground just to keep farming sometimes but we need to have the ability to look at that property down the road and they shouldn't be just uh, patchwork quilting and we end up with transportation issues in that particular spot we end up with uh, utility issues because well darn there's a sewer there but I can't get to it because there's already a 7-eleven in front of it you know so there has to be some uh, looking down the road if you're going to start to do things to your property you should at least think what you're going to do that property 10 years from now and that that is uh, you can see that as you drive down 11 or whatever you suddenly see things popping up and they're they just like popcorn and there's no consistency in the way that does it so all we're asking is that if you're going to start doing that look at your property and what it would look like in 20 10 20 years from now and get a good idea and then that would help the planning commission and the planners to uh, be prepared and give you advice on how best to serve your property. Uh, Dirk, is there one or two areas that you feel the county commission is not serving the citizens as well as they should? And if there are, what would you do to correct it? And could you come a little closer to your mic mm -hmm. there, Dirk? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have worked with everybody on the current and past, with the exception of Boyd. I've, I've not actually met him. Um, and they're all good people and they're trying and we've had some very good successes you um, uh, what I just think we need to continue in some of the paths that they've set up um, I am a fiscal conservative um, you know I've been hired to redesign things just to take out tens of thousands of dollars of over cost and that would be probably one area what I'd like to look at is see if there we can get a better bang for our buck and take some of the, the curb appeal, enough curb appeal to look good, but we don't need to be going overboard on that. You're a fiscal conservative. Uh, would you push for 1% sales tax for the county? Um, yeah, my son said, get rid of taxes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Well, if we're going to start to lose some other sources of revenue, if we're going to, because we we get a little bit back from the income tax that goes to Charleston, we're going to have to look for replacing it. Um, and you know, the my mantra is there's only one in tax; it's income tax. You know, I can't go to the sheriff and dump a wheelbarrow full of land on there and say there's my property tax. No, I got to give him part of my income. So we just need to be able to look at making sure that we can make this as fair and always a sales tax will always hit the lower income more than it will a higher income so that's a trade-off on that side so I'm not as warm and fuzzy with the sales tax although I would see it it's almost a necessity to replace what we would lose um, so now, what would we lose? I've heard the rain tax would be one thing that would be put on the table for to compensate for one cent sales tax. Is there something else that we'd be losing? Well, I'm, what I was saying was uh, if the legislature is cutting back on its yeah. uh, on the uh, income tax, what portion of that we get back will not be coming. Um, what a uh, so. If we are losing revenue there, we're going to have to pick it up. Uh, the rain tax is a, <laughs> which is a, the fee for that. Uh, part of that problem is 
they're not telling you what that's for. Uh, and some areas really shouldn't be paying it. Um, it needs to be directed at where there is primarily the, the I-81 corridor because that's where the development is. Um, and I don't know that originally the EPA didn't even care about Back Creek, but somehow it got in there. <clears throat> uh, so there's some areas that shouldn't be in, in that fee area. But if we had an, a clear understanding of what they're doing with the money, you may not be as uh, opposed to it. And they're not doing a good job of educating us. And they're not doing a good job at trying to push, I think, that one area where that fee could be helpful and where I'd like this joint operation of public-private as well is we can get the DEP, get the Department of Highways, get our rain tax, and we start to fix some of the drainage issues along our highways. Then you would say, okay, I don't want to pay it, but at least I'm not driving through six inches of water every Thursday. So if they, if they were you could see what they were doing and if they were clear on what they were doing and we started working together with these different groups then we might get something done if it's just collect taxes and send out notice of violations yeah i get it it's you know what's it for yeah one of the areas was inwood inwood had a lot of flooding several years or so ago and that's been corrected but your point about the uh, uh why is it expanding in back creek valley uh the sewer district was given responsibility for implementing and collecting the so-called rain tax and they looked long and hard and said if we just gave it to our customers that would be unfair so our customers should not carry the whole county so that's how it was expanded to cover countywide well, the whole MS-4, the whole county was covered under the MS-4. It was, that, yeah. yeah. And so the idea would be if you're part of the MS-4, you're going to get that. Now, there are actually some reasons why their Back Creek or places next to the Opekin uh, would need to have some input in this, is that the MS-4 is going to be responsible for stormwater management structures, past and present, um, and to make sure that they're maintained and not failing or clogged up uh, we have a few that had their outfalls jammed up they weren't supposed to be wet ponds but they're full of water because their outfalls are clogged up so yeah there would be some reasons for them to be there if there is some stormwater structures around so the, that also makes sense and maybe that may be where the fee should go is towards what type of structure you're they're responsible for Maybe not necessarily to the individual, but do you have a stormwater structure that needs to be maintained? So homeowners associations may not like that as well, but that's where it's going to end up going. Dirk, sure. we have a minute left. Uh, tell people how they can find out more about your campaign for county commissioner. Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, uh, tell people how they can learn more about your campaign for county commissioner. Well, I'm still building that site. Um, I have uh, plans on, on uh, start showing up at the various areas out there that uh, even people's yard sales so i'm going to start hitting the trail on that i'm building a site and it should be available by the end of the month what will it be called it'll be called uh elector stansbury dirk thanks for coming in today can i throw out one uh sure uh like say dr brian palank is retiring but that's not why i'm giving the kudos he's beginning his 31st year as a referee and coach with youth soccer in Jefferson County. And get out there and join the 4-H, help the 4-Hers, help the youth soccer, help all, all of those youth groups out there. And go help, the community. Get involved, man. Help the kids. Thank you, Dirk. Okay.